Hello friends, in today's video we are going to discuss oxygen casket. It is a very important topic for EDAC and FRCA. So let's get started. Now we will discuss the transport of oxygen from lungs to cells. Now when we breathe, there is ventilation of lungs and this ventilation supplies the oxygen to the alveoli. In the alveoli, the oxygen crosses the alveolar capillary membrane and reaches the capillary blood. Here oxygen is carried by blood either in combined form or in dissolved form. From here the blood moves into the capillaries where it diffuses to the mitochondria which is the final destination of oxygen. Now on your screen you can see the diagram for oxygen cascade. It shows the partial pressure of oxygen at different levels during its transport. In ambient or atmospheric air it is 21 kPa. In humidified tracheal air it is 20 kPa. In conducting airways it is 15 kPa. In the alveoli it is 13.8 kPa. In arteries it is 13.3 kPa. In capillary blood it is 6 to 7 kilopascals and in mitochondria it is 1 to 2 kilopascals. Now we'll try to understand how we get all these values at different levels. So we'll start with the atmospheric air. The atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascals and the percentage of oxygen in atmospheric air is 21%. So when we multiply the two we get a value of 21 kilopascals. Now when this atmospheric air reaches the trachea it gets humidified. And because of humidification, there is entry of water vapor into this air. This water vapor has a saturated vapor pressure of 6.3 kPa at 37 degrees Celsius. Now, we'll, while calculating the partial pressure of oxygen, we'll subtract the 6.3 from the 101 atmospheric pressure and we'll get a value of 19.9 kPa. Now, when this air reaches the conducting airways, there is mixing of this air with the dead space gases and the oxygen levels fall further to 15 kPa. In the alveoli, there is a continuous delivery of CO2 by the blood, this continuous uptake, uptake of oxygen by the blood. So this further reduces the levels of oxygen to 13.8 kPa. When this oxygen crosses the alveolar capillary membrane, there is a further decrease of oxygen from 13.8 to 13.3 kPa in the arterial blood. And this fall is because of three reasons. It can be either because of a shunt or a VQ mismatch or diffusion impairment. And this difference is known as the alveolar arterial gradient. So any factor which will increase the ventilation perfusion mismatch or shunt or diffusion impairment will increase the alveolar arterial gradient. Now in the capillaries the partial pressure of oxygen is 6 to 7 kPa because the tissues are continuously extracting oxygen and supplying CO2 into the capillaries and the final step which is the mitochondria has a partial pressure of 1 kPa. Now we will discuss oxygen transport in blood. Oxygen is transported in two forms the bound form and the dissolved form. Bound form is 99% and dissolved form is less than 1%. This is the formula for calculating the oxygen content which we have also discussed in the previous video and it is equal to hemoglobin into 1.34 which is the Hofner's constant into oxygen saturation plus partial pressure of oxygen into 0.225. Now Hb is obviously the hemoglobin concentration 1.34 is the Hofner's constant which tells us how much oxygen binds with 1 gram of hemoglobin then the oxygen saturation we obviously know about the partial pressure of oxygen 0.225 is the ml of oxygen per deciliter of blood per kilopascal of oxygen partial pressure. Now when you calculate using this equation, we get the ideal oxygen content to be 20 ml per deciliter and the venous oxygen content to be 15 ml per deciliter. There is another term known as oxygen delivery or DO2. It can be calculated by multiplying oxygen content with cardiac output. Now we will discuss what are the methods to increase oxygen delivery. It can be either increased by increasing the oxygen content or it can be increased by increasing the cardiac output. Now to increase the oxygen content, you can increase the circulating hemoglobin by giving blood transfusions. You can maintain high oxygen saturations by giving supplemental oxygen or you can increase the dissolved oxygen component by giving hyperbaric oxygen. For increasing the cardiac output, you have to optimize the heart rate and rhythm, you have to optimize stroke volume and you have to maintain a perfusion pressure which can be done by using inotropes and fluids. This was all for this session. Hope it is helpful for you and see you in the next one. Thank you.